Hello and welcome to College Programming Tutorials. And this is, we're going to start out with C++, which is a very common language to learn in college if you're a, a science or a computer science major or a computer engineering major or a computer information systems major. It's a very common language. Um, we're going to start out with it first and then we're going to move on to Java in the future. And we'll do Java after we finish this one. For this one, I'm going to use the book Introduction to C++ by, or Starting Out with C++ um, by Tony Gaddis. Uh, the book, frankly, is used a lot, but it's not very good. And so whenever I had this in college, I didn't really like the book. And I saw other means of learning how to do it and to gain knowledge about it. So I'm hoping that by doing these tutorials and working through some of the problems at the end of each chapter, then... I can help people uh, learn the language better. And so we're gonna start out, and I'm using a Mac. Um, so if you're using PC, that's fine. It works either way. But on Mac, I'm using Text Wrangler for my editor, and I'm going to compile using the command prompt, um, or terminal, as it's called. If you're using a PC, you can use like Visual Studio 2012, if your school offers it to you for free or you can use Notepad++ and then compile it that way. And so let's start out. And so we got a blank document here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to include some libraries for this one. We're going to include iostream, and it's done just like this. Hashtag include iostream, and then we will include iomanip like this and that will allow us to manipulate the input and output and of course you gotta use uh, using namespace standard just like this STD and then we'll do initialize our main function and we'll do it like this and this is how I always like to start out my programs whenever I am working on a project like this and this is so now we're pretty much set up. This is a good template to have if you're doing C++ just to start out with these things. And that way, if you save a template, you don't have to type them in every time. And so we're going to start out with this one. We're going to go over the input and output. We'll do variables and arithmetic. And so we'll just kind of, you know, get gather a few things all at once. So. What we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to talk about the input and the output. So to output, you use C out, two less than symbols, double quotes here, and we'll just say hello world. Okay, and we'll do another double quote, and then you do a semicolon. And at this point, if you don't use anything else, if I was to go down here and I was to do C out, um, YouTube like this everything would run together so a good way to do it is like this you can do um, see forward slash in right after the word double quotes semicolon and that means a new line so you can do it like this or you can do it like this we'll just type in the same thing and this is the method that I usually use just so that I don't um, add to me slash ends and it's easier to read, but it's quicker to do it the other way. You just use end L, which means end line. So that's gonna output. So we'll go up here to our file and we're gonna save it um, as lesson1.cpp. And I'm gonna save it to the desktop. Then we'll use our handy dandy Mac stuff here and we will use terminal and we will change to the desktop and if you're not familiar with the terminal in Mac OS X um, whenever you want to change something you can just do CD desktop or you can do like CD slash desktop and if you need to go back use the tilde in front of the file or the folder that you want to go to and so to compile it we're going to do G++ dash O not zero O the name of the file 
or what we want it to be called. So we want it to be called lesson one, and you do the name of the file, the actual CPP file, like this. And it should compile it, and you see over here, it shows our executable file. And so we'll run it, and as you see, it shows hello world, hello world. And they're both on different lines. Now if I would have done it together, it would have showed them on the same line. So we'll close that out. So that's how you output. So what if we want to get input? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to input something. So let's, uh, let's create a variable and we'll just do a regular int variable. So you do int, then the name of the variable. So we'll just call it x and then that initializes it. We don't have to give it the number. And so we can go down here and we can do C out, enter a number. And as you see, the color of my text changed once I saved it to a CPP file. And we'll do it like this. And then to input, you do CN. Then you do two greater than, and then whatever you want it to be. And we want it to be the X variable. And it's very good practice to use spaces. Like this, it's easier to read. So we'll save it. And we will go back to terminal. And then we will compile it again. And as you see, it didn't it doesn't doesn't make a new file, it just replaces it. And so we'll check it out here. And it says enter a number. So what if we enter 10? And that's all it does. It doesn't output that number, but it allows us to input it. Now if we wanted to output it, then we just do C out. And this time you don't use double quotations, you just whatever it is. And this is how I like to do it whenever I'm working with variables. So you just do X. We'll save it and then we will compile it again. And if you're compiling this on Mac, you do have to have Xcode. The plugin works to help compile it. So we go right here, we enter a number and let's do this time we will do 19 and it outputs 19 for us. And that's the basics of output and input or C out and C in. So let's say we want to do something a little bit more. What well, if we wanted to do arithmetic? And that right there, you can do it several ways. You can add functions, but we're not going to do functions or structures or classes until later on, a couple more lessons. So for this, let's say we want to do arithmetic. That's fine. We'll create another variable and we'll just initialize. We'll actually initialize two variables. So we'll have x, y, and we'll do z. Now, an int or an integer, it can only be a whole number. It can't have a decimal or anything. So it's only a whole number. So whatever we do, we need to make sure that we don't divide or seek a reminder or go over any of that as long as we're using int values. So we're going to do enter a number, and we'll do cnx, and then we'll do cn y. And for this, we will do to output it, instead of outputting that, we'll create another variable. And this time we're just going to call it um, int answer. You know, you, you don't have to do use x or y, you can use whatever you want to. And so we're going to say answer is equal to x plus y, like that. And I know I had z, so you actually don't need answer. We'll get rid of that. We can just do z. There we go. z is equal to x plus y. You can do C out, Z, and then you gotta do like this. And then there we go. So we'll save it, then we'll compile it. And it's gonna be like, hey, I don't know what's going on here. So we've got to CD to the desktop. There we are. And if you just push up, it uses the last command used go here so we enter a number we'll do 10 then it wants another number and we'll do 11 and so we get 21 so that is how you do arithmetic and you can also do multiplication and division and remainders and so to do remain to do division you just do a forward slash to do multiplication you do a star and to do remainder you use a percent sign it's got a different name, but I can't remember it. It's a, I don't know, percent sign. But then, 
And so that gives you a reminder. So you have an int. That is an integer top. You also have a double top, which allows for decimals. And then you also have a constant. Now if you name a constant, that means that it never changes and you need to define it then. So we say constant double answer is going to be equal to 21. That number can never be changed. It, it's a constant variable and it's a good and we'll use it later on. So that's a constant. And so you have a constant, a double, an integer. You also have string and you also have character. Now strings you have to include the string library like so so then you can use string after you include it otherwise you can't so a string is something like hello that's a string and a character would be something like a and that is the data types that's commonly used you can also make your own data types whenever you use a structure and stuff so this will conclude the first lesson and so we went over input, output, variables, the data types, integer and double, constant, string and character, and arithmetic. And I know this is a very quick lesson, but whenever we hit other chapters, we'll use it more. So I hope this helps if you're starting out with C++ or you want to learn it. And thanks for watching.